let me just let me just quickly go through what we're trying to do uh, in the next couple of um, in the next couple of weeks. As you know, the president made the announcement yesterday, last night, um, about the new classifications for July 16th. So um, Metro Manila will remain in general community quarantine. Um, Cebu, on the other hand, and uh, I'm going there right after this uh, this forum. I fly out to Cebu uh, at 11 o'clock. Um, has um, eased up a bit to modified enhanced community quarantine. And Clark, uh, which is in Pampanga and Targa, is still at um, modified general community quarantine. So just to allay the fears of everybody um, and to be very, very upfront and transparent with everyone, there is a increase in cases, especially in Metro Manila and other urban areas. And this is primarily driven by number one, we're testing a lot, lot more now. We've quadrupled the tests in the country from just a little over a month ago. Uh, and we breached the 1 million tests uh, two days ago throughout the country. But as we increase testing, we have also experienced an easing up of the economy because as our economic managers have told everyone, we can no longer stay in this prolonged lockdown. No, because the economy is reeling from the effects, not only of COVID-19, but of the lockdown. And we have to start easing up slowly but surely. But the impact of that is as people go back to work, as people go out, um, if we are not careful, if we do not wear our masks, if we do not practice very frequent washing of our hands, and if we do not uh, distance from others, then we're going to see a spike in cases. And this is something that we're going to have to deal with, not in the next month, not in the next six months, but in all likelihood, we're going to have to deal with this in the next 10 to 12 months. So that's what I wanted to talk about, how each and every LGU, each and every company, and most importantly, each and every individual needs to pitch into this effort because na the national government can't do this alone. It will require a lot of effort from LGUs, from cities, from companies, and from individuals. So now we're moving into the stage of our dealing with this pandemic to giving more empowerment to all of us. You know, how does each and every company, each and every city, each and every individual, how do we all pitch in to try and manage COVID-19 as we deal with it in the next 10 to 12 months, knowing fully that we need to open up the economy. We need to restart, um, especially our small and medium scale enterprises. We need to restart, build, 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 which we, we've already done. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to empower companies. We're trying to empower cities and municipalities um, in order for us to deal with this as we move forward. So in Clark, we're happy to report to everyone that roughly 80,000 of our employees are already back to work. That's roughly around 65% of our total workforce. Um, and that's across all industries, manufacturing, leisure, um, BPOs, um, and everything, no? infrastructure. Our construction is full blast now. Yesterday, we we visited um, about six members of the cabinet, including Secretary Sunny Dominguez of Finance, Executive Secretary Miguel Dea, um, Budget Secretary Avisado, Transportation Secretary Art Tugade, who's a regular on the Asia CEO Forum. We went to inspect Clark International Airport. Um, I hope later if the, if the presentation comes online, you'll get to see some pictures of Clark International Airport. We're almost there and we're confident we can open by the end of the year or beginning of 2021 at the latest. So build, 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 as you know, is the prime driver of this recovery program that we have. Um, and it's meant not only to create jobs, but it's also to create 
all the necessary multiplier effects that infrastructure provides. Infrastructure provides not only direct jobs, but it also provides the impetus to reboot the entire economy. Having a new airport um, makes um, it easier for tourism to kickstart, makes it easier for businesses to kickstart. Now, knowing that uh, there is a new gateway to the country and it's going to be the best airport in the country when it's all said and done, um, I'd love to host the Asia CEO Forum members to, um, to a visit to Clark maybe in the coming months when it's safer to go out. Um, but we cannot overemphasize the importance of infrastructure and rebooting and restarting um, our sectors, manufacturing services, including BPO, IT services, tourism. Um, and the good thing about it, it's coming to life here in Clark. You know, 80,000 people already working. We're testing them um, regularly. We, we passed the new guidelines for testing, which we've expanded significantly so that um, people working in the private sector, especially those who are, um, who are frontliners, meaning who have intense contact with the public, are going to get tested, and that's going to be shouldered by PhilHealth. So I think we all have to pitch in and just do our part in making sure that we are able to manage this pandemic at the same time, balance the reopening of the economy. So with that, you know, um, uh, I just want to end there, uh, Richard, and maybe later on when the deck is available, maybe I can just show you a couple of, um, a couple of pictures and a couple of updates uh, on the Build, Build, Build program and on Clark uh, as we move forward and as we slowly but surely open the economy. Thanks very much, Richard and everyone. Very good. Well, Vince, that's so exciting. I, I never knew you were that far along. I thought the airport had uh, years to, to go. So you're saying by the end of the year, early next, because we would love to come up and show off your facility to, uh, to, wow. to people from across the region. Um, Okay, well, we'll be in touch with your people about that, uh, Vince, and well done to you and your your group there for getting everything going. Now, I understand you are flying around the country on your COVID work, but but you, you have to leave shortly, do you? Yes, I have to leave, unfortunately, at 11. So if there are any questions from anyone, I'd love to answer them. <laughs> well, okay. Maybe if you could add a little bit more. So with, you, with the the COVID thing, do you think now the focus will be on opening the economy? You think we can get to that or, or whether we still have to be paranoid? Because I know Cebu had some troubles and some other places, but, but it seems things are getting better. Is, is that fair enough? What do you think? It's a very delicate balance, Richard. You know, and and uh, the president is trying his best with the team to balance the, the ensuring that um, we are going to save lives uh, that can be lost because of this uh, very insidious uh, virus and, 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 and the disease that we're facing. But at the same time, we cannot deny the fact that we have to slowly but surely start opening up because the economy, um, and it's not just the Philippine economy, it's the global economy. No? I mean, Singapore, for instance, just announced that it contracted 40 plus percent in the second quarter of this year. No, I, have, I haven't heard of a, any economy in the world that is contracted by 40% plus. No, so we all countries have to deal with this, but we have to balance it by ensuring that we can save lives uh, and protect our, our people from this very insidious disease. Um, but we are all united in our efforts to slowly but surely open up the economy, but at the same time try to manage COVID-19 as best as we can. But we can't um, stay in an intensified lockdown forever. So we've just got to um, work together because we need to um, get the private sector, the companies, and individuals to really pitch in. If I could just add, um, um, Richard, you know, if you look at the countries that have best managed this, um, despite the many challenges, 
You look at Japan, you look at South Korea, you look at Taiwan, uh, you look at Hong Kong, although Hong Kong has gone back into lockdown um, the past couple of days because of increases in cases, just to highlight that there's really, we really have to be careful with how we manage COVID-19. But if you look at all those countries, one very common, very strong common denominator is how the people in these countries value discipline, how they are so disciplined in following the very stringent health standards that we have to follow, wearing of masks, frequent washing of hands, um, distancing in public, making sure that we are always protected and we do not expose ourselves and others to, um, to risks of exposure and infection to these disease. So we need the public sector, the, the private sector, especially the companies, to really enforce these standards. And also we need each and every Filipino worker to really take it upon themselves to really practice discipline and make sure that we all pitch in uh, and do our part to minimize the infections and the spread of this disease. Yes, that's very yes. true. That is good advice. But okay, well, I think the the private sector certainly would be very excited about your airport. I just had no idea you're so far along. That's going to cause kind of a, a the next phase of the Clark boom, will it not? You know, I, Richard, I'd love to show you some pictures. I don't know if I even can share some pictures with you, but well, apparently I can if you don't mind. No? I would be glad to see them. I don't know whether we're whether we have them though. Oh well, I, I, unfortunately, I don't think I can. No, but um, um, we've sent the emails. Maybe later on, even if I'm not here, maybe the secretariat can just show pictures of actual pictures of how the airport looks like now. And it's really a beautiful airport. It's, when it's all said and done in a couple of months, it's going to be the best airport in the country. Oh, that is so exciting. Vince, that's so exciting. We'll have to have you back and you, and you can talk through it more. I don't know whether we can we can do that, but but that is very, very, that, that is so exciting. Jeez, I, I just can't. So whenever you're ready, Vince, you let us know and we'll bring a whole bunch of people up to see it. I want to see it too, of course. We'll do. We'll do, Richard, okay. anytime. Okay, Vince, and please uh, don't work too hard. I know you're uh, flying all over the place on, on your COVID work. Uh, so please take care of yourself and you stay safe too, of course. Thank you. And by oh, the way, okay. just a big shout out to Dave Almirol. Al 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 um, and please, everyone who's listening in, please ask your employees to download uh, staysafe.ph. It's very important for us to keep track of this and uh, Dave and his team have done a fantastic job with staysafe.ph, but we need the support of the private sector to ask your employees to download this app so that we can all keep track of the spread of the virus.